Swapnil Bharti and we are here at DockerCon and we are meeting Ben from Red Hat. Just tell us a bit about yourself, what do you do at Red Hat? Sure, so I'm a product manager, I work on the RHEL team and uh, my focus is on the Linux container space. So it's you know container runtimes and then everything around that down to like systemd to our container host which is atomic host and where we're going with Red Hat Core OS and I also kind of have one foot in OpenShift and how, how everything you know, connects up to the platform tier. And I think after the Core OS acquisition, a lot of things are changing. The products' names are changing, uh, and uh, the whole strategy around containerization, Atomic Project Atomic, has also been renamed. I think. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're evolving Atomic. Uh, basically, um, the short version is uh, Atomic Host is going to be superseded by what we're calling Red Hat Core OS, which is going to bring in all the user experience and things that people love about container Linux uh, into our Linux ecosystem. Right? I actually so, like the way you retained the name Corus because that's when the company started. I and I love, so Container Linux was kind of boring name. It, so, and it didn't seem to catch on that exactly. well with the users. Everybody called it Corus anyway. Exactly, yes. Um, and so it's a, it's a it's very, nice. very, it's a great term. And when you put it. Red Hat Corus, then it just you know brings the two best of both worlds kind of yep. together. And you guys have been working together for so long that it was. I loved Corus as a company, yeah. Philip and Alex. So it was kind of. I was sad, at that because you know one more independent company, and I was like, oh, I won't get to see them that much because I used to meet them a lot. But now you know, it's so it's like uh, fun also. You know, it, I still meet them. <laughs> yeah, it, it's gone really well too. Yes, and so it it's, is. It is. It's been exciting, and you know, but, so just just to put a point on that, so Red Hat Core OS is going to be the immutable host option in OpenShift. So right. that the whole platform moves and all the automation that those guys you know have with Tectonic is coming into OpenShift right. so it's it's a, it's exciting time for Yeah, us. I did an interview at Red Hat Summit to understand the whole strategy on what how the integration will work so that was I, we talked about you know what is going to happen with the um, Tectonic what's going to happen with the you know, only thing was Rocket was kind of you know because it doesn't it has service purpose yep so anyway let's go so where does build up fit into all of this you know Yeah, good good question. So we have uh, kind of a lot of our next-gen container tooling, and Builder is one of those tools. Uh, on the Kubernetes side of the house, we've seen with the introduction of the container runtime interface, or the CRI, uh, Kubernetes is now pluggable at that runtime tier. So we've been investing in one called uh, Cryo, right, which is version to move with Kubernetes, and it only provides what Kubernetes needs and wants. Um, so that's on the runtime side, and then now we have this hole where we need tools to build and manipulate container images, and that's what Builder uh, gives us. I was um, sitting with some friends yesterday, and the discussion was around Kata containers. Yeah, how they they use OCI mm -hmm. runtime instead of. Uh, so what is going on in that? You know. Yeah, it's a good good question. So uh, we we worked with back when it was clear. Uh, those guys, uh, we so. We, Basically, Cryo and Kata work really well together today. Um, you can define a trusted or untrusted runtime in Cryo, and then it, that will determine whether the pod is started, you know, with Run C if it's trusted, or Kata, which is, you know, basically the virtualization abstraction. Um, so it's really great how this whole stack works together and plugs, you know, plums into Kubernetes. Um, so right now with Kata, we're investing in a, you know, at kind of the upstream facilitation level. Um, you know, and so we we interact with you know s several of the Intel guys right now. The specific work we're doing is getting getting Kata into Fedora. We like to take a lot of the newer runtime technologies and kind of prove them out in Fedora uh, before we take them you know into into the product space. And so mm -hmm. that's that's kind of where we're at with Kata right now. It's really promising. Uh, but what is the difference between you know Kata? I mean, of course, security is the primary focus, and how interchangeable are these? Yeah, so Kata uses, well, it can use multiple hypervisors, but primarily use a KVM hypervisor to uh, basically give each container its own kernel, right? So we it isolates at the mm -hmm. hypervisor mm -hmm. level. Um, traditional Linux containers typically use the kernel APIs right. of, you know, like C groups and namespaces and those things. And so that's that's primarily what most containers run on today, right? And that's what run C stands them all up with. Uh, Kata is is really good and powerful, um, but y you know, it you know, you're either going to have nested vert or you need bare metal or you know, it comes with um, you know, I don't overhead's probably not the right word, but there there's some Yeah. Yeah, there's some restrictions around it, I guess. I, 
I need a better word for that, but you know. I understand what. So, so can you talk about the 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 the, the build up of build, <laughs> yeah, build up of build up. You know the core components and yeah, the, absolutely. So. And, and it, what is the what is the story behind the name Builder? Yeah, that, that's a good one. So Dan Walsh kind of lead, he leads our container teams, uh -huh. and he has a very thick Boston accent. Okay. And so when he asked, uh, you know, one of our top guys to go start this tool, and he's mm -hmm. like, "What do we call it? I don't know. Call it Builder." Mm -hmm. He doesn't say Builder. Okay. Dan so says Builda. Okay. And so that's why the name of the project is Build A H to make fun of the Boston oh. accent, and the logo has a Boston Terrier. Um, and yeah, so it's it's kind of a, a whimsical spoof on, on that accent. So was was the project conceptualized also in Boston or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we actually started it in uh, the Czech Republic. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> at, a, at a conference. It should have become um, goulash or something like that. It, <laughs> that would have worked too. Yeah. Um, but it, the idea is basically, you know, if if users like the Docker file workflow. Mm -hmm. All of that can run through Builda. Builda doesn't need uh, any daemon, or you don't need a Docker engine basically to build containers. It's just a, it's a small binary. Yeah, yeah. Once again, yeah. So before we go, sure. so tell us what, what you know, what are the core, what is the buildup of Builda? You know, what is in in there, and then we'll talk about how okay. what it uses. Well, what's in it? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from a library perspective, we use a, a storage backend called. I mean. The, it's a generic repository uh, called Container Storage mm -hmm. and Containers Image, mm -hmm. and that's what handles transferring the images as well as storing them in the you know the typical layered OverlayFS or whatever type of graph driver you want to use on the back end. And so it's basically all those components mm -hmm. uh, bundle into into building. Okay, and now okay, so now let's talk about you know how it works with yeah. Sure. So if basically the whole idea is just creating images and manipulating them. And Builder gives you really fine-grained control into how you want to compose them, um, how you want the layers to look, all this type of stuff. And it, you know, it's we see it useful for companies to drop into the into their CI/CD pipelines, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, it works great uh, doing builds out of Kubernetes. Uh, that was one of the reasons why we started it was because we needed to change the security model. Of, of how builds are handled on platform. Uh, and so right now the work is going on where we're integrating build it into OpenShift. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, you know. What was the need for Builda? Well, great question. So on now that we have like purpose-built runtimes, um, like things like Cryo or Container D, mm -hmm. there's a need for, you kind of need that other side of it to do the compose of the container. So there's actually, yeah, probably five or six different build utilities that have sprung up over the past six, mm -hmm. nine months in the space. So it's been interesting to see uh, the tooling modularize and become more specific uh, or more specialized in the space. So when, when Red Hat works on these technologies, I mean, this question, you may feel uncomfortable, but the, so sometimes, you know, uh, it comes from the, the customers want something and you come up with a solution to help them. And that's, on the other side of the equation is that you have your own, you know, platform, your own stack. So you want to offer better integration so the story doesn't come from the customer side but come from your side. Hey, you know what? You have the whole stack, you just come in there, you don't have to worry about stuff. You just you know run the whole stack and you just focus on what you want to do. So which kind of which side of the I I'm gonna say both, uh -huh. right? It um we have we have like really well defined customer needs around around security, right? Mm -hmm. I mean that's the that's the big the big space that we have to obsess over. Um, and so that's part of it on the build side. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other side, though, is that in the container space, there's not a lot of options for uh, doing a lot of these operations outside of the Docker engine. And so, you know, there was kind of a, a space where we felt we could add a tool. And, and particularly around now that we have the OCI standards, uh, you know, back when we started this, there was a little less than a year ago, there was no, no tool that just could spit out OCI images that was right. really valuable. Mm -hmm. And so build a, that was, that was how we started and it's grown from there. Is that, you know, consensus building towards OCI in a way that the, uh, is moving towards more standardized? Uh, yeah, well, well, so OCI is definitely defining the standards mm -hmm. on run, image, right. and the distribution side is right. the newest spec. Um, so, and, and that's frankly where our strategy is in the container okay. space is around promoting those standards right. and tools that work with those standards, right? So, um, 
you know, I, I think just on the on the Kata side, they they do work with Docker on on like the standalone side, but in Kubernetes, yes. typically cryo is the the way to consume that and use that. Uh, but there's more work going on on the uh, some various pod specs and so forth to right. extend that. Okay, and uh, and this is uh, this has already already been productized. This is a product, not a, just a project, right? Mm. Good question. Uh, it's a project, mm -hmm. uh, but we do ship it in RHEL, so it is supported. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it, it went in with 7.5, mm -hmm. uh, but you know it's it's available in GitHub. It's in Fedora. Uh, I'm pretty sure we even make devs available of it as well. So it's it's easy for anybody to kick the tires up. So is it fully open source or there are some proprietary angles? Also? We don't do any proprietary. <laughs> we don't right. do any. In fact, all the companies we acquire, we end up open sourcing exactly. all of their stuff. We don't, there's no value for I, I don't want to create any controversy, <laughs> but then the Microsoft GitHub acquisition yeah. happened. And I actually like that, you know, because sure. now GitHub has a more stable, you know. Uh, it's a good move for, good, good move for Microsoft. And I was actually shocked and surprised to see that people were moving away from GitHub. I was like, either you were clueless what GitHub was earlier, <laughs> Uh, so I would like, if Red Hat acquired it, they would have open source everything, you know? <laughs> so that would be fun. Because I, here also I talked to a lot of, you know, like Docker, you know, they're still, yesterday they made some announcements. So mm -hmm. my question was how much of it is going to be open source, you know? So companies are still playing with the mix and match. So Red Hat is a good model uh, to, to, you know, open source everything. Now, uh, will this be as, you know, uh, uh, as an open source project, you know, it's on GitHub, but is it like how do you ensure that uh, even your competitors will be able to uh, push patches or changes that they may need if they want to consume it? Uh, great question. I'm, that's already happening. Because um, a few, uh, <clears throat> I was at OpenSUSE conference. Yeah. And they forked uh, Spacewalk. Yeah. And they created, you know, because they, uh, I had a, a long interview which is published also with uh, with uh, with Claus. And he was the reason was that you know the patches that they were sending were not getting merged because they're not develop, uh, developer resources enough. So they were forced to fork it. So how do you ensure that that kind of things should not happen? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um, I think spatel, spatelite, spacewalk uh, is is kind of a different case okay. because uh, it, it's just where it's at in the in the project life cycle. It's I think is is the is, yeah. is the challenge there. Um, the container space though is the opposite end, mm -hmm. right? It's it's like there's a lot of energy, a lot of focus on this, a lot of investment, and and frankly, Suze has been a great uh, yeah, contributor with yeah, us exactly. on these projects, right? Everything from Run C to Cryo, um, yeah, and so they they've been great to work with. Right. So does it make sense? I mean, uh, that uh, all these even Red Hat projects, sh uh, they should have a very kind of a strict governance model which is dictated, just like Linux Foundation, they have very stabilized governance models. So should Red Hat also, because you guys are doing so much, I mean, not so much, everything that you guys are doing open source, but sometimes there are some friction with the community. Yeah, it, I, I think it depends on the project, project and the itself. dynamics mm -hmm. associated with it. Uh, right. Different communities have a very different uh, right. just dynamic to right, it. Right. Uh, as far as governance, um, we, so the, Project Atomic repo is a, like a Red Hat space, but we do have other vendor neutral repos that we're gonna be moving a lot of our mm -hmm. container technologies to. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one thing. As far as governance, I, you know, CNCF is, is a good place to run a lot of these projects. It's also become a very busy foundation. Uh, you know, I, I'm not opposed to, no, to putting I, any I, of these. I mean, the reason I'm asking this is because I keep hearing this question. So I just, mm. you know, somebody's there, so I'm going to discuss with that. Because sometimes what also happens is that, like, Google does a lot of open source work, you know. But at times, you know, uh, re releasing your code so people can study it or maybe can reuse it, that does not necessarily mean that you also need their contribution, you know, in one way or the other, you know. Yep. Because if it is too tightly integrated with your product, so you do have very specific focus area. Does it? Uh... I on on build in the container tools. Mm -hmm. um, so Cryo has a very very specific use case, and that's mm -hmm. only to serve what Kubernetes needs. Right. The other tools like Podman, Scopio, Builder, these are meant to just be low level generic tools for manipulating and running mm -hmm. and you know working with containers. 
Um, and so these cover a broad use case. And so these are more appealing and they're not, yeah, they're gonna work with our products and portfolio better and have and be more integrated, but there's no reason they don't work standalone with other distributions in the mm -hmm. space. So, and that's part of the reason why we're getting a good amount of contribution, right. so. And of course there is always, you know, some pros and cons, some balance you have to maintain and you cannot make everybody happy all the time. <laughs> right, yeah. My, my boss likes to say, if you're making everybody happy, you're not doing your job. <laughs> exactly, yes, yes. But the, the, the most important thing is that, you know, everything is open source and under a, a license that can be reused very easily. So, yeah, I mean, that, absolutely. I mean, that's our whole business model, Exactly. Right? Uh, so, so what is going to be the cadence of Builda? Good question. Um, All of my questions have been good or you just like to say them? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so when you don't that like the is question. A trick question. <laughs> so there's two cadences, right? There's an upstream cadence for a project, and then when we productize something, it's what is our cadence at you know with something like a rel or an open shift, um, and and even those two are on different cadences as well. So uh, in the container space, uh, you know, I think what we're looking at is locking in a lot of these. Um, and, and versioning them and giving customers like long stability for them. So Build a Podman and Scopio are gonna lay this nice stable foundation for us on the rel side. Um, so I, I you know eventually we'll we'll be at probably an annual release cadence and we can do a tail of one to three years on them, which is which is good because people want that type of stability. The upstreams though are gonna move quick as we would expect. Since it's already also available with the uh, with Fedora, and now you also have CoreOS. Yep. Plus, uh, I talked to CentOS team. Yeah. So now we have you know three or four. So how will you keep up you know the cadence? You know I don't understand. You know, one will be like totally focused. I think with the for the customers at the same time there will be something for the community so people can you know develop quickly and fast. Yeah. So how will you maintain that? Yeah. It's a good, another good question. <laughs> so all, all of the OSs we have kind of in the Red Hat ecosystem serve a very distinct purpose. Exactly, right? yeah. So Fedora is the fast-moving distribution that, you know, we take and becomes the next version of RHEL. Right, right. that's upstream for RHEL. Yeah, CentOS serves a, a different function to build on top of the Linux ecosystem. Sometimes Fedora moves too fast to do uh, certain types of use cases right. on top of it, and CentOS perfectly fills that. And then Container Linux adds a, a whole other dimension exactly, yeah, and dynamic to yeah. it where uh, it's it's really just about kind of hiding a lot of the operating system from the end user, or just not worrying about it, right? It's it updates automatically. You know, my workloads are in containers, so I theoretically shouldn't care when the OS updates. You right. Know? So it's a it's a it's a totally different uh, model from from the others. It all comes together with OpenShift, right? So uh -huh. that's a that's a big focus for us, and where we see value in the container space, right? Mm -hmm. Is I, I mean. You know, I like to focus on the technology. I'm a I'm a nerd at, at heart. You know, but end of the day, it doesn't matter how good the technology is if you're not bringing value and helping customers move quickly. Right. Um, and that's and that's really you know I, I just want to make the point that like all of our focus in this space is targeted uh, at OpenShift. Okay, so we talked about uh, containers. We talked about OpenShift. Let's talk about you for a while. Okay. So when you're not doing all this, you know nerdy geeky stuff what do you do in your free time I'm sure you do a lot of nerdy geeky stuff you in your free time I do uh, so when I'm not focused on Red Hat's mission mm -hmm. I'm a guitarist outside of this. really so yeah I was a music major uh, jazz studies and I love love making music so so next uh, Red Hat Summit you'll be on the stage playing you know, I haven't talked to them about that. I should though, because I have this great guitar that has a big Tux logo on it, and it, uh, it looks great. So because uh, yeah, uh, because uh, Suze Con, Suze people, their whole band is made out of engineers. Even Ralph, he oh, sits on keyboard, and Nils Brockman, uh, he's a very good drummer. I met and, their bass player at uh, one of the Linux cons in Toronto. Uh -huh. He was a super nice guy. So we were, we were talking all all the music stuff. What uh, was his name? I. It escapes me. It's been is he a year or two. Yes, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. him very well. He long be beard hair. and long. Yeah. Oh, he's a good, very good friend. Yeah, and super I nice have guy. a great friends in Red Hat and Suze, so I'm kind of bridge between you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nils Brockman is a very good drummer, and I every time I meet and interview him, the first question is, 
are we going to see your debut at the next Suzy Con? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys should invite him I for think, the Dead Head Summit. Yeah, I think I should go sit in with their band. Right? Exactly, yeah. So it could be very good cross, you know, <laughs> politician of, you know, Suzy CEO is <laughs> the keynote of Red Hat Summit and then maybe Jim can go and do something there. It would be fun. It would be, um, that's what open source is all about. Right, you know? right. They, their marketing teams and sales team can compete as much as they different want. Different kind of collaboration. Yes, but yeah. yes. <laughs> that's, that's fun. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for talking yeah, to me today. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again next time at the next open source summit. Yeah. And you know we will keep this conversation around what is going on in the container space. Great. In the future as well. Yeah, Thank appreciate you. it.